is that it's a vital experiment in physics because it was one of the first things to provide a big piece of evidence for the wave theory of light. Before we get into that though, we need to look at some key, ad key ideas. So we're going to look at two terms, monochromatic and coherent. You just need to be confident of using both of these terms. So monochromatic comes from the idea of single colour and if your light is monochromatic, it's made up of a single wavelength. Coherent means you have a constant phase difference. So if you're producing coherent light, then you've got constant phase difference. For that to happen, you must be producing light at the same frequency. If you've got different frequencies in there, you can't have a constant phase difference between them. So when we're looking at Young's double slit, so we've got our double slit set up, we've got our screen. The key thing for this to work is you must have coherent light. In the past, when Jung was doing this experiment, he would have a colour filter followed by a single slit to get that monochromatic coherent light. These days, we will often just use a laser, which the laser is itself a source of coherent light, so we don't need to worry about using that initial single slit. What this means is the double slit acts like two point sources of coherent light. So you can look, well, what happens as the light diffracts through here and interacts as we reach the screen? So the first thing we get in some places is constructive interference. So constructive interference happens when the light from the two sources reaches the screen and is in phase. If our light is in phase, it means we are going to see a bright fringe. So we're going to be reinforcing each other and producing something that's a bright fringe. This happens if the path difference between the two slits is a full number of wavelengths. So we call it m lambda. So if they travelled the exact same distance, they would be in phase because they started off in phase. If they travelled one, if one slit travelled one wavelength further than the other, then they would still be in phase, two wavelengths, three wavelengths, and so on. There were also at points destructive interference. This happens when our waves meet and they are out of phase. So we've got a pi phase difference between them, or 180 degrees and we get a dark fringe. So whereas in the past, at our constructive interference, they were reinforcing each other, now we've got cancellation, we've got destructive interference, and we're getting a dark fringe. This happens when the path difference is half a wavelength out, or a multiple of half a wavelength out. So the way we normally express it is m plus a half times lambda. So if it's half a wavelength, 3 over 2 wavelengths, 5 over 2 wavelengths, and so on. Our equation for Young's double slit, w equals lambda d over s. So w is the fringe separation. Lambda, as always, is our wavelength. d is our slit to screen distance. And s is our slit separation. So we're looking at this equation, we can see very easily what effect would our wavelength have on our fringes, what effect would the distance have on the fringes, and what effect would the separation of the slits have on our fringes. The result of the Young's double slit experiment was our screen there. What we would see right in the centre, we would get a bright fringe, because it is equidistant from each slit. And we would see alternating dark and bright fringes. So it would be dark fringe, bright fringe, dark fringe, bright fringe, and so on. And the distance between the fringes is given by this equation here. 